thank you for checking out my channel Mavericks Arcade. My name is Chuck and today I'm going to show you how to set up the Ultimark light guns from the very beginning to getting them to work consistently in MAME. There are steps to get them to work in other emulators but today we are focused on MAME only. Now, all arcade games, the retro games, they're fun to play but you definitely need the light guns if you're going to enjoy games like Area 51, you know, Lethal Enforcers and um, you know, Terminator 2, things like that. So, I've purchased two guns. Now, one thing to be aware of with those guns is they are shipped with the ID 1. So, do not plug in both guns at the same time, or else they will not be recognized properly. What you want to do is install one gun at a time, change its ID, and then install the second gun. Now, in my case, you'll see in my configurations that I have guns three and four. I don't have them defined as one and two. Now the reason why I do that is that if I ever add another gun, I don't want to have to reconfigure things first to make room for the new gun. Now likely I'll only ever have two, but I just want to make sure you understood when you see three and four, that's because it's the way I have them configured to make room. Now, because I've already installed these guns, and you can see my cabinet is uh, I don't want to be taking it apart just to show you how to plug in a USB device. I think you can pretty much handle that on your own. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go to, we're going to leave our arcade software, and I'm going to show you, well, first of all, um, when you're setting up the hardware, the guns come with this little light bar device. Now, I already have one up on there, um, mounted and everything correctly on the top of my screen. The issue is, is that the guns are sold as if you're buying one. So when I bought two, I have an extra one left over. Um, for me, the tape on the bottom worked fine to mount the screen. However, if um, you have a very narrow screen that you're mounting to, you can either mount to your arcade case or you can use super glue or some other 3M tape to hold this securely on. But you want to plug this in, have it connected, and then plug in the first gun. Then you have to go down to the and install the Ultimark software. Um, now when you go into the Ultimark software, it's the only problem I have with Ultimark is they use the same icons for each of their devices. So I have three <laughs> Ultimark logos on the bottom. Um, so you go into the, the Ultimark that says the Ultimark Aim Track. Um, there are a couple of different options on here. If you have a recoil add-on, which I do not have, um, you can configure it in here. But basically you will see in the corner it'll say device one and it'll be lit up green. So what you want to do is click on the device one and go to change ID and there's just buttons to say which ID you want to change it to. Um, like I said when I plugged in my first gun I set it to ID three. I then went back, closed, uh, applied the changes and closed the software, plugged in my second gun, reopened the software. And there was a new device one, so then I just hit change device ID, and I selected that to set it for device ID four, so that I had my first gun was three, my second gun was four. Now, one thing that you do want to definitely do while you're in here is go into configuration and make sure you have the device set for your first gun, and where you see button assignments, there is a um, trigger left and right and there's an enable cal that stands for enable calibration I recommend that you do not have any of those buttons checked and the reason why is if you get into a game that has say a machine gun effect and you're supposed to hold the trigger down well if you're holding that button down it thinks you want to enable calibration so I recommend unchecking those boxes so that in the middle of your game it doesn't try to calibrate the gun so, once you've got both guns configured and the light bar is mounted in place, um, you're going to want to go into the device, select the gun that you want to calibrate. You're going to stand at the distance that you will normally play the gun or play the games at, and you're going to want to hit calibrate. What's going to happen is on your screen, in the top corner, you're going to see a blinking arrow and it's going to be trying to go up to the corner. Simply shoot at that dot. Once you've shot at it correctly and it's been detected correctly, then it will move to the other side of the screen. Do the same thing there. Shoot that. 
Then in the bottom middle of the screen, there will be one going up. Shoot that. As long as you can shoot each three, then your gun is calibrated. If you're having some other issues uh, getting the gun to calibrate, please check Altmark's website. They're pretty good about telling you how to fix normal problems. One thing you may run into is these light bars are not made for screens that are like 50 inches. Mine happens to be a 40 inch screen, so I'm perfectly fine with the size bar that I have on my screen. If you have a 50 inch or larger, larger screen that you're setting your arcade up on, Altamark does offer a larger bar that will fill that need. So once you've got that selected, um, go ahead and hit apply changes once you've calibrated both of your guns. And we will resume the next step, which is to then uh, configure main to accept those guns. So at this point we've installed the guns. They are working in the configuration software and Windows can see them. The next step is going to be configure the controller file. Again, this is the controller file, not a config file. So let me show, turn on my recording. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to go into our emulators folder and then into our main folder. Now the folder that says CTRLR is the folder we want to go into. Um, I'm going to show you the configuration that um, I have created just for the guns. Now my other video for stabilizing IDs in MAME goes over how to you know, set up the stick, set up the trackball and spinners and things like that. But again, this video is focused on just the guns. So in our configuration file that you can see on your screen, we have four lines of map device. The reason why again is because at least on my system, which is Windows 7, the aiming of the gun and the trigger shows up as a mouse. The button on either side of the gun shows up as a uh, joystick. So, in our system you can see PID 1603. The 3 is significant of the ID that we set. Again, I set my guns up as IDs 3 and 4. So on my system you see PID 1603, which is this gun, and then you see 1604, which is the other gun. But then you see on the bottom, a track device number three and a track device number four. A track device number three is these two buttons on this gun. A track device number four is the two buttons on the other gun. So, once this configuration file is there, you go ahead and save it and remember whatever it is you named the file because then what we'll need to do is go into main and we're going to tell the system that by default it's going to load that controller file. Now if you have an um, arcade system that they sent you a control file to use with it for their sticks, um, then you're going to want to go ahead and use their conf controller file and add those uh, lines that we just showed to that controller file. Again, I've built this arcade 100% myself, so therefore I'm not aware of what those controllers are that come from other companies. But just make sure whatever controller file you're using, you add those four lines for your guns. Make sure not to copy, if there's already a jo Joy Code 1 and a Joy Code 2 for other controls, make sure to set the number to something that's not been defined yet. Now. We go into uh, okay, so stupid color setup. So then, anyway, we go into once we've got that, we go back to the main part of our main folder, and we're going to scroll down and we're going to look for main I and I, and in that folder, we're going to scroll down until we get to the section where is it on mine oh, I might have passed it yep I did so we go back down to
core input options. Again, core input options, and underneath there, there's a, a line that says CTRLR. That is asking for what your default controller file will be. Here you will put in the name of that controller file that you were um, using and configured the guns into. And do not include .cfg or whatever the extension happens to be. Just put in the name of the file. Save that file and closed. And basically at that point, MAME is ready to um, remap the controls. So what will happen is the gun, the devices normally show up in MAME and they're given random based on how they're found in the system. By doing this with the controller file, we're telling MAME, take whatever you want to give the ID to be and instead use these IDs, those joy codes. By doing that, that stabilizes the controls so that they will be the same every time you launch MAME. The next step that we're going to do is going to be to actually go into MAME and configure our default controls. So we have now configured the guns to work in Windows, to be calibrated in Windows, and we have made sure that the control file is set with MAME so that the guns will con consistently get the same ID. The next step is in MAME itself to configure those codes. So what we'll do is we'll hit tab, go to options and hit enter. And we're going to go down to general inputs. Now under, more than likely you're only going to be setting player one and player two controls if you have two guns, obviously three and four if you have more. But so for player one, the way you configure these joysticks, or at least the best way I've found to configure these joysticks, is in my case on my arcade panel here I have button one, button two, button three. It's best to set the gun that way too because most of the games will recognize button one as a trigger button and button two as a button on this side where a right-handed person would be using their thumb on this side. Player three will be on this side. Now if you want to set the gun up left-handed, what I would then recommend is button 1, button 2, button 3. So what you'll do is you'll go down to where the player has, you know, for button 1. What will happen though is when you hit the gun initially, for some reason whatever's there already will get erased. So you'll end up having to hit the button, press the trigger, and it will then, oh, it detected my movement. That's another problem you're going to have with these guns, is if you are having them pointed at the screen at all, it will detect it. So on my screen, I'm now showing gun 1, Y, and X. So we're going to have to delete that command, hold the gun down where it won't be detected, hit enter, press the trigger. Now I'm only showing gun 1, button 0. So I'm then going to hit the enter button again with my gun pointed away and I'm going to hit what my button one also is, which is the first button on this. So I go down to my button two, and in my case I'm going to delete what's already there for button two. And I'm going to hit enter, and again, away from the arcade, hit what you want button two to be. Then I'm going to hit the button again, and I'm going to hit what the button 2 is on my player controls. Same thing, I'm going down here for player button 3. I'm hitting enter and with the gun pointed away, hitting button 3. And then I'm going to hit up again and then hit it on the control panel. Do the same thing for gun, gun 2 or whatever other guns you have. Then we're going to scroll all the way down to all these mahjong things. Passing all of that, and we're going down to where it has light gun. So it's got light gun X, light gun X, analog uh, decreasing, increasing, so forth. So anything for the light gun for player one, we're gonna go ahead and just delete. And then we're gonna go back up to light gun X analog. Now before you hit enter to set this key, you're going to aim the gun 
until you're getting some sort of mouse indication. And then you're going to hold it very still because what will happen is if your gun shifts up and down, it's going to detect that. So you're going to hold it very still and get ready to hit enter. And then when you hit enter, only move it left to right. Try not to get any up and down movement. And if you get it right, it'll respond with gun, whatever the gun code is that you set it at, and X. Just X. If anything else shows up, you have to hit delete or try to reassign that key. So now we're going to go down to light gun Y analog. Again, we're not messing with the uh, decrease or the increase. We're just messing with Y analog and X analog. So now we're on the Y analog. We're going to again make sure we have mouse uh, movement with the gun. And we're going to hold the gun steady as we hit enter and then move up only. And now it's showing gun Y. So as long as your screen has for light gun X, uh, the code saying gun whatever the number is X, and then for light gun Y, whatever the code is gun whatever the number is Y, then it's going to be able to track the movement of the gun. You can see that my mouse cursor are moving all around the place. So then, and then back at the top where we had the buttons for button one, button two, button three, again, button one, button two, button three. Do the same thing for the other gun. Now what will happen is as you go into, the reason why we launched MAME all by itself, we didn't launch a game, we launched just MAME, is because by doing this and doing the general inputs, we're setting those as the gun controls for all of our other games. Now, in those individual games, you can still go and set custom controls just for that game, but by doing it here with just launching MAME all by itself, we're setting the default inputs for the guns, which will cover most games. Um, the only downside to having the button one, button two, button three being what the gun's defined as, is that in your games that are shooter games, if you have LED blinky, they will light up uh, because they are gun buttons. Um, the but well, the buttons are the same for the gun as they are for the controls. Now, um, once you've got that configured, if everything is correct, then you should be able to go back to your normal system launch your arcade software. I'm going to turn mine down a little bit here. <clears throat> um, Alright, so here we are. I'm going to turn it down a little bit more. Alright, so then we're going to go ahead and go in and we're going to go to let's see go to Operation Wolf because it does have a, um, a grenade button. So we'll launch Operation Wolf. And as you can see my LED blinky has lit up these two buttons. But I'm definitely able to shoot him and I got a grenade on the tank and the helicopter. I'm going to shoot the nurses just because I'm a jerk. And that is the functioning gun in MAME. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. Comment below and I will try to assist. But that's how you do it. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please click like below. If you're into retro gaming or building arcade cabinets, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks again for watching.